A compression tester is a very useful tool for checking engine wear or diagnosing a variety of problems. They aren't ridiculously expensive, but if you don't want to buy one, most MMOC branches will have at least one member who has one, and you might be able to borrow it for an afternoon. These are the various bits. This is the pressure gauge. Although these gadgets are called compression testers, compression is actually a ratio and we're measuring it indirectly by measuring the pressure in the cylinders. This bit is a hose that clips to the gauge. Make sure you push the collar firmly into place so it can't blow off. There are a number of different sized adapters that can be screwed on to match the thread of the spark plug hole. Only screw these on by hand. Don't use a tool. If you're checking an engine with unusual spark plugs, there are also a couple of adapters with rubber ends that can be pressed into the spark plug hole to make a seal. The first thing we need to do is go for a good drive to get the engine up to operating temperature. Some people run the test cold, but we really want to know what the engine is like in normal operation. Park the car with the handbrake on, make absolutely sure it's in neutral, and take the keys out. Now we can remove the spark plugs. First the plug leads come off. Note that these ones are numbered with cable ties. Most spark plug sockets have a rubber ring to protect the ceramic insulator on the plug. This is quite likely to stay on the plug when you take the socket off. Make sure you replace it. If you use the socket without it, you risk cracking the plug. While the plugs are out, it's a good opportunity to check them. They should be biscuit coloured. This one looks okay. Now we remove the air filter. It may not look like this one, but remove it, whatever it is. We need to fix the throttle in the fully open position. Depending on the carb type and the strength of the throttle return spring, we may be able to do this with a brick or two on the throttle pedal. The car won't notice, that's how I normally drive. Alternatively, we can wedge the throttle open at the carb. Don't be tempted to wedge the carb piston up. Whatever you use will probably get sucked into the engine. The intake vacuum will lift it anyway. Now we can screw the adapter into the first spark plug hole and attach the hose and pressure gauge. Tighten firmly by hand, but don't use any tools. Now an important safety check. Verify that the car is still in neutral and the keys are removed. If all is well, we can turn the engine over by pressing the button on the bottom of the starter relay. As the ignition is off, there won't be any spark and the petrol pump won't run. Be careful not to get any body parts or clothing near the fan or fan belt. Most of the literature says you should turn the engine over for 10 seconds. That seems a bit much to me. I just keep it turning until the pressure stops going up. And I'm getting about 250 PSI here, but this is a highly tuned engine. On a stock Morris 1000, around 150 is ideal and 120 is okay. We look at what the various different results mean at the end of this video. Before removing the gauge each time, press the button on the side to release the pressure. Now we repeat the test on the other three cylinders. It's a good idea to test each cylinder a couple of times. Write the readings down carefully. When finished, we can replace the spark plugs. 
A lot of people just wrench them in, but I prefer to use a torque wrench set to 38 newton meters. Whatever you do, don't forget to unjam the throttle or remove the brakes. If you forget, you're going to get a big surprise when you start the engine. Now we can return the air filter and spark plug leads. So, what do all the readings mean? In a perfect world, you get about 150 psi on each cylinder. But it's much more likely the readings will vary a bit. That's fine if they're within about 10% of each other. If they're all down slightly, but roughly the same, then the engine may be getting a bit worn, but again, not a cause for major concern. A good trick here is to put a generous squirt of oil down each spark plug hole. If that brings the readings up, the problem is probably worn piston rings or worn balls. If one cylinder is significantly lower than the other three, it's most likely a valve or valve stem to blame. Again, you can try the oil down the hole test. If there's not much difference, it probably is a valve problem. If the pressure goes up, it's probably a ring or bore issue affecting just one cylinder. If two adjacent cylinders are significantly down, this is almost certainly a blown head gasket. Remember that these are only the most likely causes. There are endless possibilities, particularly with a badly worn engine. It could be something nasty like a cracked head, a hole burned at a piston or a curse placed on the car by a local witch. I hope this video has given you a few basic ideas. Thanks for watching and see you next time.